This tale unfolded in the dense woodlands of Canada. Residing in the lush woods area was a man renowned for annually breeding top-tier dogs. The secret to his breeding success lay in the unique combination of wolf and dog genetics in his animals, resulting in striking and sought-after puppies. Regrettably, the man lacked empathy for his animals, prioritizing profits over their well-being. He pushed his breeding practices to the extreme, leaving Princess, one of his dogs, utterly exhausted after just six years of service. Faced with the consequences of overuse and neglect, the dog owner, Boromir, confronted a challenging predicament. Recognizing that Princess was no longer fit for her duties, he grappled with the decision to retire her and keep her as a pet, adding an extra mouth to feed. In an act that he deemed necessary, Boromir resorted to an unthinkable solution, disposing of Princess quickly. Princess, unaware of her master's deceitful intentions, eagerly accompanied him as he left the house. Like any dog in the world, she reveled in the joy of going for walks, a rare occurrence with her owner. Little did she know, this innocent outing would lead to a cruel fate. Boromir transported the dog several kilometers away from home, driving into a wooded area where he came to a stop. Releasing Princess from the car, he led her into the forest. Despite her curiosity about the unfamiliar surroundings, the man had different intentions than a pleasant stroll. After a short distance, he tightly secured the leash around a tree trunk, instructing Princess to sit. Obediently, she complied, eager to please her master and avoid potential mistreatment. Turning his back on her, the man simply walked away, leaving Princess initially unfazed, expecting her master to return shortly. As the sun descended in the sky, Princess couldn't shake the growing worry. Where was her master? What should she do? The hunger pangs in her stomach intensified, and thoughts of her puppies, likely desperately seeking their mother, weighed heavily on her mind. Yet, Princess remained composed, attempting to rest in the hope that the next day would bring a more favorable outcome. Upon waking the following morning, hunger gnawed at her once more. With an intensity that drove her to nibble at the leash tethering her to the tree, Princess knew she had to find food urgently. Her sharp canine teeth proved resourceful, and within an hour, she managed to liberate herself from the binding restraint. Despite a lifetime in captivity, her half-wolf heritage endowed her with a potent hunting instinct. Within a few hours, Princess successfully captured prey. Thirsty, she set out to locate the nearby river. However, as she followed her nose to the ground, an unexpected and feared scent reached her, a wolf. While she shared the lineage, Princess had been raised as a domestic dog and was ill-prepared for a confrontation with a wild wolf, let alone an entire pack. Considering a hasty retreat, she halted upon hearing something familiar, the whimpering of puppies, a sound deeply ingrained in her experience. Driven by a maternal instinct, she felt compelled to investigate. Following the sounds, Princess reached the entrance of a cave and cautiously advanced. Upon looking inside, she discovered a deceased she-wolf, likely the mother of the six little furry friends peeking out from behind her. Princess's instincts proved accurate, the puppies were in distress, facing an uncertain fate. Her mammary glands, filled with milk due to her separation from her own litter, suggested she might provide the assistance these vulnerable pups desperately needed. The puppies found in Princess the foster mother they desperately needed. Nestled in a cave, Princess swiftly gained the trust of the young ones, and before long, the boys were suckling on her teats. The bond between Princess and the puppies deepened, and they grew rapidly under her care. As time passed, Princess honed her hunting skills, imparting her knowledge to the growing cubs. The playful roughhousing among the young animals and their stealthy stalking practice unknowingly prepared them for future challenges. Months later, the once helpless cubs had transformed into robust wolves. The time had come for each of them to embark on their individual journeys. A dense fog enveloped the surroundings, reducing visibility to a minimum. Princess, feeling the call of the hunt, ventured out alone, leaving the now-grown pups behind. After a mere twenty minutes, she sensed rustling around her. As she raised her nose to the air, the unmistakable scent of wolves reached her, signaling a potential danger. Her heart raced, 
knowing she stood little chance against a pack of wolves, and she realized she might be entering a perilous territory. A dark figure emerged from the fog, a large black shaggy male wolf growling menacingly. Princess, attempting to defend herself, was startled as more wolves materialized from the mist. She understood her vulnerability, realizing she had no chance against the pack. In a last-ditch effort, she threw herself into submission, but the snarling wolves seemed oblivious, or perhaps indifferent, to her gesture. The pack descended upon Princess, who braced herself for a fierce battle. However, the odds were against her, facing five fully grown wolves alone was a daunting prospect, and the situation appeared dire. In the midst of the confrontation, a glimmer of hope emerged as six young wolves burst forth from the bushes. With fierce determination, they defended Princess, fending off the attacking wolves and causing the rest of the pack to retreat. Despite the numerical advantage the wolf pack held, they chose to withdraw, seemingly intimidated by the unexpected resistance. The young wolves, in a courageous display, successfully repelled the attack at the eleventh hour, saving their mother's life, just as she had once saved theirs. Let's continue. How did the stories develop? If it's your first time here, if you want to know some new stories that will make you wise and knowledgeable, make sure to subscribe to us and activate the notification bell so you don't miss any updates. She wanted to take a walk today along the trails around Colorado Springs. That's a creek near her house. There is a paved path here. A bear died last Thursday. After browsing through suggestions from netizens, she decided to go for a walk in the forest with some tools. Svito, 26 is about to be six months pregnant, she was walking when she saw a 225-pound cinnamon-colored black bear fall from the sky. I thought it was a dog at first, a big dog, but it's a cute bear, Svito said, then she walked another hundred meters, the bear has been following her, but always a few meters away from her. It trotted after me, and then after I walked a few blocks, it left, Svito said, she told the story in a pre-recorded interview with BBC News in Horror, her experience was like a war or an escape, but she can't fight a bear. So she keeps running. She started running and yelling for help, but no one around hears her. After going through the underpass, she walked on her way home. Then things got worse, although it was a bad day, Svito is still running hard. There is no crosswalk in this lane that she saw an older woman sitting in the car, Svito thinks the vehicles will let her go first and cars always stop to let them pass, but this car doesn't do that. Svito was hit by the driver. The driver did not step on brake. She was knocked down, she fell to the ground and stood up again. The driver rolled down the window that she said she was slowing down. Svito told the driver that she is being chased by a bear. So the woman didn't apologize and didn't ask if she was hurt. That she left quickly. No one wants to stop and help her. Svito returns home with her fiance. Dai Li participated in today's program with her. She was so scared and she told him what happened. Local police were called to investigate the incident, she also went to the hospital to make sure she and the baby were not hurt that she told her fiancé that I can't believe this story is true that this is crazy, police, cameras and journalists showed up within minutes, the bear later turned up in someone's yard that IT seems to come here often, the staff anesthetized the bear before euthanizing it, Speedo blamed by neighbors, they say she gave the bear an untimely death. This bear is often seen in neighbors' yards, this article was published by a local newspaper, some negative comments have appeared in Svito's chat room and message boards, Svito said it was just made up by the publishing house that they never interviewed her, she didn't know the bear was going to be killed when she reported the incident that IT wasn't her intention, she wouldn't have reported this if she knew they were going to do it. She never blamed the bear when people were blaming her, but she wonders if. The bear bit a small child so it was euthanized on Saturday, the woman who hit Svito was an officer, will she be charged with a crime that it's not clear. Svito not sure if she wants to sue that I didn't get hit by it, she said, but in the meantime I want to ask her. Why didn't she stop? If it were me, I would do this, anyway, if it were you, would you move on? Both Svito and Dai Li gave everyone affirmative answers, when their baby is born, they want the bear to be treated with respect, this doctored news is meaningless. Bear will be the child's middle name. Here's another story. A man says his dog was attacked by a bear. It did that to save his son. On the day Chris was chased by a big black bear, his Labrador retriever willingly sacrificed its life. He would probably be dead without this dog, 
Toby is a black Labrador retriever. It is a friendly and intelligent dog. It likes to sneak out and play with other kids. Vic says it speaks at least two English words that he can say water and hello, this is what I taught him. Vic laughed that he would say these words to Toby, and the dog's voice gets noticeably louder when he says this, Toby wasn't trained to hunt but the first time he hung out with Vic's son that he swam out and caught some birds that after being told not to do so, Toby never bothered the birds again about 11 miles east of Sandhill Cranes near Vic's home that you don't know how much I miss that dog, the 67-year-old said. Toby was killed by a black bear near his backyard at around 5 p.m. on May 21 that he was accompanying Vic's son. Chris, 45, on an expedition, they walk on a trail leading to a 25-acre woods, they reached an open meadow again. You can see from the house that there are many mushrooms here, Vic said that we only eat mushrooms, Chris said it was troublesome, then they collected a batch of mushrooms that we picked a lot of mushrooms and filled this bag, then I heard strange noises in the woods ahead that I thought it was a man standing by a tree watching us, then he noticed two bear cubs in another tree that they climbed high. Meanwhile an adult male bear walks across a farm field that there are several bears there, when we looked back, the bear was still standing there, and then Toby came over and looked at Chris, after a few minutes it disappeared into the bushes, Toby ran back to me like a frightened dog, Chris says that a 300 pound bear was chasing the dog, and it was going at least 25 mph Chris says, Toby stopped when he got to me dot then it turned to face the bear, then it charged and knocked the bear down. Chris said Toby became very irritable and moved very quickly, Chris ended up climbing back about 10 meters, this bear attacked his dog. Savagely, Chris said he had never seen anything so violent in his life, John Vick says the bear caught Toby, Toby is no match for the bear that it's pure violence, Chris said he ran to the house at breakneck speed. I've been running away and when I first got to the house, it was shot. There are many stars in front of my eyes that I lost my hat, my mushrooms and my jacket. The next day I pulled a thorn out of my head, this is the cruelest thing nature has ever done to me. There is a big wood that he said. The bear and the cub are big, I've seen them cross the road, that he thinks the bear has been around for years that it bothers them, they can kill a calf in a shed that even if they put some utensils, maybe that's why the neighbor's girl feeds the horse that from gentle to grumpy, the bear speeds up its attack that it almost killed Chris, but Toby saved his life. That's something I'm pretty sure of, dot. Chris isn't sure, but I'm pretty sure the bear doesn't have any interest in me, he said that we just met the bear family under the wrong circumstances that it's not a good place for a dog, especially a big black dog that he hasn't even got his hat back yet. Nobody can get out, the bear attacks, its attack hit the dog. I'm getting out of the woods, Chris said that IT may still be out. Toby's paw hurt. It was a 4 to 6 inch deep gash that IT has bite marks on its shoulders, the bear knocked it down that IT was trying to drag Toby to its lair, then I went and brought back Toby that I grew up on a farm and I know it well. Toby was seriously injured trying to save Chris that IT did its best that so they loaded Toby into the car and took him to the vet. I don't know this vet, but I have a lot of respect for him that IT was past 11 o'clock that night that he's doing everything he can to save Toby's life. John said the dog was there from the night of May 21st to the night of May 24 th that when it is brought home that IT is drinking water but not eating, its condition got worse on Monday, John said, John was busy at work that day that he is a bus driver, his work was very busy that day that he had to work longer hours that day, because the students are all going to the Memorial Day service that he said, in fact, I can see that Toby's health is going from bad to worse, Toby was drinking water when he suddenly spit out white. Foam that they send it to the clinic, the veterinarians immediately tried their best to save it, Toby was sent to the medical department of the Ivy League University and spent the night at the veterinarian. The month after I left him, it died there so I asked the Vic family to bury it in the backyard, John said that he plans to put a concrete sign over the grave that it read. Toby, the dog who saved my son, dot thanks for watching, please like and share this video with your friends, remember to subscribe us dot see you later. Let's continue. The bears blocked the rails seeing why people couldn't stop crying. Dan Morris dreamed of becoming a train driver since childhood and when his parents bought him Christmas gifts, they knew that the only thing that could make their boy happy was the toy railroad. The boy was born in a town in Wyoming and was used to being with nature. In summer, 
the boy went to the forest to pick mushrooms and berries. In winter, he went skiing or sledding. When Dan graduated from high school, his parents had no doubt that he would become a train driver and would end up working on a railway. The young man started his new profession with enthusiasm and he quickly mastered these skills. He saw each new success as his own personal victory. Studying was easy for Dan, which greatly delighted his teachers and family. It's true. It only happens when the person studies something that he's truly interested in. They hope it would become the work of their life. Finally Dan's most cherished dream came true. He became a train driver. There are no words that could describe how happy and excited when Dan was first stepped into the driver's cabin. Of course, Dan first had to complete a long internship under the supervision of an experienced mentor who couldn't stop marveling at his desire to learn. His love for trains is endless, even if it is a complicated job. Mom, Dad. Today I drove the train on my own for the first time. Dan said after returning home from work. His parents looked at each other. Without saying a word, they rushed to hug their beloved son. They had no doubt that Dan would achieve his goal because he had been working tirelessly for it. Over time, with his unremitting efforts, this determined young man turned into a professional in his field and the bosses always always follow his example. The other day, Dan transported valuable timber and minerals from one part of the country to the other with his partners. They admired the beauty of the places they passed on the route. By this time, the man was already married. Every time his shift ended, Dan rushed home to hug his wife. The man knew that there would always be a delicious dinner waiting for him at home prepared by his beloved wife. Day by day, nothing changed in the life. The young couple had no changes except for the glorious growing tummy. Dan went to work and it seemed to him that nothing could surprise him in the profession of the train driver. The young man couldn't have known at this time how wrong he was. One day, during a rather ordinary journey transporting a load of timber, Dan and his partner, Jimmy, witnessed a strange incident. It's happening right on the railway track. Dan, who carefully followed the driving rules, was intently watching the tracks ahead as he was driving the train. He admired the beauty of the surrounding views. In order to get a better view, the man looked through old army binoculars once in a while. He got them from his grandfather who took part in the war in Vietnam. This stretch of the way ran through a particularly picturesque area. The breathtaking landscapes delighted Dan and Jimmy. Suddenly Dan noticed something strange several hundred feet ahead of him. At first, the man thought that it was just an optical illusion. But then he realized that it actually wasn't. From a distance, the strange object resembled a log or a medium-sized boulder. When Dan looked closer, he was horrified to realize that it was a man. The driver's heart beat fast and his hand instinctively reached out for the brakes. The fact was that the man was lying on the wheels and was not moving. Dan realized that something must have happened to him. Then Jimmy screamed out in surprise and pointed towards the forest near the railway track. At least a dozen bears jumped out of there. These predators instantly surrounded the man lying on the rails. My goodness. Dan thought that they would tear him to pieces. He realized that this unfortunate man desperately needed someone to help him. To his amazement, bears surrounded the man. They raised their heads and began to howl loudly. What are they doing? Jimmy asked. However, Dan didn't answer his question since he was at a loss and had no idea how to act in a situation like this. He came across these forest predators in his life but they did not behave in such a strange way. Dan pulled on the brakes and the freight train with a load of timber began to slow down, but it continued to move for a bit. Then something happened. It surprised two drivers and made them believe in miracles. Jimmy shouted and pointed to the man who lay unconscious and showed no signs of life. That man stood up and was now kneeling down. Dan looked away from the dashboard and saw what his partner was talking about with his own eyes. At the same time, the man got up and staggered off the track. Dan thought maybe he's drunk. When the train moved a bit further, 
they caught up to the stranger and the bears surrounding him. Dan realized how wrong he was. The man who fell on the tracks turned out to be an elderly forester who probably got overtired from a long walk around the territory. He had a backpack on his back and a case with a small axe. Moreover, the man wasn't scared of the bears surrounding him. On the contrary, he stroked and petted these brown predators. Dan asked, are you alright? He anxiously leaned out of the driver's cabin. The forester smiled and nodded his head. The bears won't harm you. Jimmy asked out of curiosity. No. They will not harm me. They are not predators. They're my friends. The forester answered with the smile on his bearded face. Two drivers looked at each other and shook their heads in response. Neither of them had ever seen anything like this in their life, so they couldn't find any words to comment on what just happened. After saying goodbye to the forester, Jimmy and Dan continued on their way. They gradually accelerated the train to its regular speed. In the rest of their journey, the drivers could only think about the strange old man whom they had met on their way. Eventually, their emotions had subsided. The men completely focused on their work. About two weeks after the incident, Dan was walking around the city and accidentally met the forester who was surrounded by bears. As if those bears were his domestic dogs. Dan immediately recognized the old man and greeted him warmly. After hesitating for a second or two, Dan asked the elderly man to tell him what had happened that day on the railroad tracks. Turns out the forester's name was Jackie Simpson. He considered himself a hereditary forester because his father, grandfather and great-grandfather had all worked in forestry. Simpson's choice to become a forester didn't surprise anyone in the family. After hearing this, Dan nodded respectfully because he always highly appreciated the people who guarded the natural resources of his home. Simpson had held his position for at least 30 years. He knew the area entrusted to him like the back of his hand. The old man once came across a young female bear killed by hunters and three brown bear cubs. They're clinging to cold body. He wanted to take a detour. After realizing that the cubs would die without a mother, Simpson decided to adopt them. Thus the old man buried the female bear under an old pine tree and placed a huge boulder on her grave so that predators wouldn't tear her body to pieces. Simpson took off his jacket and put the cubs in it. He carried them home in his makeshift bag. There the old man fed them porridge and even dog biscuits which they really liked. Three cubs lived with Simpson for about six months. When they got stronger and bigger, they went to live in the forest. Nonetheless, whenever three predators came across the elderly forester, they would always recognize him and even play with him. Over time, the bears were still friendly and affectionate with the old man. That's exactly what happened that day. The forester got high blood pressure from a long journey and fainted right on the tracks. Fortunately, Simpson's friends were nearby at that time so they could save him quickly. What you just told me is incredible. Dan was very impressed by the old man's story. That's not surprising because animals will remember and repay you when they're treated well. Simpson said. He shook hands with the young driver. Dan would often recount this amazing story to his son, Roger, sitting in front of the burning fireplace on long winter nights. He thought that this story should be passed on forever and it would live forever. When the time came, Roger would tell his son about it. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks. We'll be right back to you as fast as we can. Thank you.